following animations were provided by John Higton. John served as a National Service Radar Mechanic at RAF Bempton between 1957 and 1959, working underground in the bunker. This was known as the hole to those that worked there. John returned to Bempton in 2003 and was appalled with the condition the site had been left in. This is what inspired him to create a permanent record of the Bempton he remembers. John describes Bempton as a quiet and efficient part of Britain's radar defence against the Soviet Union. He was shocked to see it vandalised and reduced to a burnt out shell. While it was in operation, the station was top secret so there are very few official records. There are only a few aerial photographs, general arrangement drawings and an incomplete set of operational records left relating to the site. John used these remaining records and his site survey as the basis for the following video. A lot of the detailed information came from RAF equipment manuals. In order to create these animations, John had to acquire some computer graphic skills. The result of all this work is a unique record of RAF Bempton during the Second World War and the early years of the Cold War. Since John created this video, the bunker has been completely sealed and is no longer accessible. It is also located on private property. In the early years of the Cold War, the RAF Bempton domestic site was on Cliff Lane, just north of Bempton Village. The basic layout of the camp is shown here in this aerial view. It was built in 1952, at the same time as the underground radar site on the cliffs. Until it finally opened in September, the first intake, an NCO and 37 airmen, were billeted in condemned huts on the old wartime site on the cliffs near top site. Now for a brief tour of the 1950 domestic site. This gate on Cliff Lane is the main entrance to the Bempton site and the building with the veranda to the right of the gate is the guard room. Moving out from the guard room veranda, the first building on the opposite side of the road is the station headquarters and next to it, a little further down the road, is the station sick quarters. On this main road through the camp, the tall building on the right houses the standby generator. To ensure continuous radar coverage, in the event of mains failure, it provides emergency electrical power for the radar site. The sergeant's mess is the next building on the right-hand side of the road. Further down the main road, the group of buildings on the high ground at the end is the NAFI, a popular destination for airmen after a long day's work. Next to the NAFI, the large building on the right is the cookhouse, and in the distance beyond that, on the southwest corner of the site, are the huts with the living accommodation of the radar operators and technicians. These radar section huts, which are a standard RF prefabricated design, are centrally heated, quite a luxury in the 1950s. There are 10 huts provided for the radar personnel. They are split up into five pairs with a small drying room between each pair. The high-level external pipework carries hot water from the camp's boiler house to supply the central heating system in the huts and the clothes drying facilities in the drying rooms. This is a view over the camp very familiar to all radar operators and technicians stationed at Bempton. The huts are on slightly raised ground and most parts of the station can be seen from this vantage point. Some of Bempton's sport and leisure facilities, the tennis courts and the NAFI buildings, can be seen from the huts. To the right of the NAFI building, just out of view in this shot, is a large field which is used for a variety of sporting and leisure activities. The diesel tanks for the standby generator are clearly visible in this view from the NAFI, as are the sick quarters and headquarters buildings near the camp gate. The white buildings in the background are married quarters for the officers. The huts in the foreground provide the living accommodation for the RF Bempton domestic site personnel. These huts are arranged by twos along one side of a single path with the drying room on the other side. This first building is the officers mess. Behind it stands the station boiler house with its tall chimney. The large, high-level water tank provides a secure water supply for the station. The huts beside the water tower, 
are those of the domestic site personnel. They have the same facilities and are virtually identical to the huts in the radar section. The MT section near the guard room is responsible for all motor vehicles used by the station. These include a Vauxhall Vanguard car, the Bedford vehicle used for stores runs to Patrington and Driffield, and a larger three-tonner used for the transport of both airmen and equipment. The building in the middle distance is the sergeant's mess. Now for a rare glimpse inside one of the airmen's huts. This reconstruction is based on the sole surviving hut at Bempton and on a sketch made in 1957 which records the interior of radar section hut number 17F. The hut has an ablutions area split into two sections. The first section has two wash basins, rather surprisingly in separate cubicles, and two toilets. The second section is through the end door and has two small bathrooms, the first one through the first doorway on the right and the other at the end of the short corridor. The living accommodation in the huts consists of two small rooms in the centre, this one usually occupied by a corporal, and the second with only two beds for airmen. The main living areas for airmen are at either end. There are two rooms in each hut similar to this one. They all have the same basic furnishings, standard RAF issue for airmen in the 1950s. This simple accommodation was home to a great many airmen in the early years of the Cold War, between 1952 and the early 1960s. As most people work shifts and Bempton is a small station, there's not too much ball, so in reality the rooms were rarely as tidy as they are portrayed here. The other room, very similar to this one, is through the door at the far end of the hut. In the 1950s the Bempton domestic site was in effect a small self-contained village but today, although most of the road network survives, most of the original buildings have gone and have been replaced by caravans.